heading into, like I said, a three-day weekend for many people. But we are also getting closer to the start of hurricane season. Want to bring in Fox 35 Storm Team meteorologist Laurel Blanchard, who uh, joins us now. And uh, Laurel, the uh, countdown is really on, and we're starting to get um, you know more looks as as far as what the outlook could be for that upcoming hurricane season. Yeah, Garrett, those outlooks are coming out from different organizations, and a lot of them do seem to be on the same page. But it's crazy to think that we're only eight days out from the start of hurricane season, which is June 1st. I feel like we just stopped talking about the 2024 hurricane season, and now we're getting geared up for the start of 2025. So eight days is the countdown. And yesterday, NOAA came out with their 2025 season outlook for the hurricane hurricane season ahead and here's ultimately what they had to say starting off they're expecting an above average year but ultimately not as busy as what we were seeing in 2024 so they are calling for a 60 percent chance of seeing that activity above normal for hurricane activity a 30 percent chance of near normal activity and a 10 percent chance of below normal activity this is just really a fancy way of saying is that it's still going to be busy however it's not going to be as busy as what we were seeing last year. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Garrett, here is what NOAA is saying, taking a look at the 2025 hurricane outlook. They're going to be predicting between 13 and 19 named storms this season, six and 10 hurricanes with three to five of them being major hurricanes there. And just to remind you of the average, and this has been a running total since the 1850s, 14 named storms on average, seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes is the average baseline of what to see this season. And they really use that as a gauge to either figure out with other astronomical and oceanic conditions, whether that is either going to be above average heading into the season ahead or below average. And these are not as high as what we were seeing last year. And just to show NOAA's credibility with these outlooks, this is the 2024 season outlook. So this is last year. And you can see those numbers are higher than what they are submitting this year. The 2024 outlook called for 17 to 25 named storms and there were 18 of them. 8 to 13 hurricanes, there were 11, 4 to 7 of them being major hurricanes, and they were right on the money with 6 of them. So that just proves the credibility of NOAA and how well these outlooks actually do every single year. And this is one of the only ones that they put out ahead of the season. There's going to be one a little bit later on this season where they'll update or maybe make a little bit of a tweak, but this is a really good baseline of what we're headed into as we take a look at the 2025 hurricane season ahead. And uh, Laurel, we know they are not the only ones who, who kind of do these outlooks. Uh, so I'm curious, we know Colorado State, one of the other ones uh, that does and is highly respected in that, how do the two kind of compare? Do they, do they line up? Are they, they generally agreeing on what we'll see uh, this, uh, this hurricane season? That is a great question. So most of the outlooks that we've seen so far are kind of hindering on it's going to be busier than average. However, not as busy as what we saw last year. Here's what Colorado State University had to say. And this one is extremely impressive as well as the credibility of this forecast is extremely high. Uh, the folks at Colorado State University do a very good job at not only explaining what they're looking at to start off the season, but also they released their first forecast in April. So two months ago, these were the numbers that Colorado State University released. They are calling for 17 named storms, nine hurricanes, four major hurricanes, and those numbers line up nicely with what NOAA called for a little bit earlier on yesterday. So here are the two comparisons, again, with those average numbers right there. So on average, again, this is good with data going back to the mid-1800s. 14 named storms, seven hurricanes, three major hurricanes. NOAA is calling for 13 to 19 named storms, six to 10 hurricanes, and three to five major hurricanes, where CSU is calling for 17 named storms, which falls within that window that NOAA is calling for, nine hurricanes, which is on the high end of what NOAA is calling for, and four major hurricanes. So it looks like NOAA and Colorado State University are pretty much on the same page when it comes to what they're looking for, taking a look at the season ahead. And uh, I know you have a, a, an upcoming uh, special that's going to break a lot of this, uh, a lot of these things uh, down for us. 
Yeah, it's really exciting. We're going to be keeping an eye on our Tracking the Tropics special, and that is going to be airing on Monday. Something that's super exciting is that this broadcast was actually made for you at home. We basically took all of the uh, stories that you would want to see and things that we would think you would want to see in this special, and it's everything that you need to know as we head into the hurricane season ahead. More ways to stay safe rather than just getting your emergency kit ready. New things that you can expect heading into 2025 and we're going to continue to see more of that really amp up as we head into this season as well and something that's also really special is that there's going to be a live Q&A after the show Noah and I will be taking your questions live and answering them as we continue to break down the season and also there's a couple of other treats in there that weren't in the special so this is something that you'll also want to tune in for the special will be live on Fox 35 but also uh, on all of our social medias as well as Fox Local, so make sure you download that app as well. And also on any social medias, we're talking Facebook, we're talking YouTube, Fox Local, uh, we'll be on that for the uh, live talk back afterwards. Yeah, the main thing is getting that information out because we know how uh, how critical it is uh, as we now get closer, you said eight days um, away from the start of uh, hurricane <laughs> season. We know uh, it's important information that uh, that folks need to know uh, because again, it, it seems like agreement for an above average uh, hurricane season again uh, this year. Yeah, we're definitely in for a busy season, but again, I'm very much hoping that it's not going to be as busy as 2024. And here are the main takeaways of what not only NOAA, but Colorado State University was looking at, taking a look. They're still going to be keeping an eye on the above average activity. We've talked about that. But a couple of the factors with that is that they're looking specifically that the Atlantic is already warmer than average for this time of year. So that ultimately just acts as jet fuel headed into this season, which allows hurricanes to have a little bit more of that possibility to form. But also with that, we're not going to be seeing as much wind shear in the atmosphere. So this is really how the ocean and the atmosphere kind of go hand in hand when we're talking about hurricane season in general. Uh, when there is more wind shear in the atmosphere, it almost tears apart hurricanes. So with that, hurricanes have a harder time to form, but when there's less wind shear, there's not as much of that tear in the atmosphere. So hurricanes have the ability to feed off that warm Atlantic water and then really pick up in strength because it doesn't have that factor that will rip them apart more talking atmospherically. So these are all of the three factors that were hit on specifically from NOAA and Colorado State University as they were releasing their outlooks. And so in another above normal uh, forecast, when was the last time we had a below normal forecast? Garrett, that's a great question. That actually goes back to 2015 was when that was released. And actually earlier on, um, 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015, or those three years right there, those were uh, all below average season. So 2013, 14, and 15 were the last time NOAA released those uh, stats of when we were calling for below average conditions uh, right there. So you can see that was the last time they submitted a forecast that was below average. So with those trends uh, continuing to be above average, really a 30 year span of above average forecast will mean that this could possibly be the new normal. However, it's only been about 10 years as we can see the last one was 2015. We're in 2025 now. So for the past 10 years, we've been calling for above average seasons. However, we've also seen some very, very cool water in the Eastern Pacific. So taking a look at that as we pop back a graphic, we're expecting to see a neutral Enzo phase, which means that we're going to be expecting average sea surface temperatures right along the equator in the Pacific Ocean, which leads to near average uh, hurricane activity for us here in the Atlantic. It still will be on the cooler side, especially along that region that you can see there on your screen. But overall, we're going to be still seeing that cooler water as we were in a very strong La Nina phase last year. So that's still going to have a little bit of an impact of what we can see this year. And again, that's something that NOAA as well as Colorado State University were hitting on in their forecast as again, calling for an above average season, taking a look at 2025. All right, and uh, quickly here, Laurel, uh, there are some new uh, new features, some new technology that's going to help uh, with the forecasting and tracking of hurricanes this year as well. If you could uh, walk us through those. 
Yeah, absolutely. So NOAA took a lot of time yesterday uh, during their press conference after they released their numbers. And these are some things that are very exciting heading into the 2025 season, especially to get warnings out to the public and as many people who are going to be affected by the hurricane as possible. So with that, Spanish products are going to be released and those are advisories, key messages, other products, etc., that are going to be put out specifically in the Spanish language. So everyone, especially here in Florida, will be able to stay well informed. There's also going to be new maps being released as well. These are experimental experimental maps. These maps are going to include not only the cone, but all warnings that are issued during the time of that release. And that includes areas just along the shoreline as well as further inland. So if you are going to be impacted by a hurricane that strikes this year, you will absolutely know about it. And this is what's going to be extremely helpful, especially if you're going to be impacted more like the remnants of a hurricane, like we saw last year with Helene impacting a lot of folks in Western North Carolina, Northeast Tennessee, and Southwest Virginia. Um, also, for us here in Florida, rip currents are extremely strong during and after a hurricane, uh, so there's going to be new models with that. And there's also going to be new technology released this year. There's going to be a new radar that's going to be experimented on and used to collect data to see how it does this season. And that's actually going to be on one and all of the Hurricane Hunter planes that fly directly into the storm. And that's something that I covered in our hurricane special, so make sure you definitely focus on that and tune in for that. Also, going back to uh, the effects of what we saw with Helene, a new product is going to be released that you can access in the public. And this is a probabilistic precipitation portal. And this is going to give you at least a decent idea of how much rain you could see if you're going to be impacted by a hurricane or remnants of a hurricane. Again, going back to what we saw with the remnants and destruction of Helene, especially in Western North yeah. Carolina, Northeast Tennessee, and Southwest Virginia. Yeah, probabilistic precipitation portal is not easy to say, but it sounds like it will <laughs> definitely be uh, helpful, especially after, like you said, what, what we saw just in that last, uh, the last hurricane season. So some, uh, some helpful things uh, on the way. Well, Fox 35 Storm Team Meteorologist uh, Laurel Blanchard, we appreciate you joining us and uh, breaking all that down for us here on Florida Live. Thanks, Garrett.